This is the CC Radio Podcast. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. we have missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight down the tree. All we get was a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. You are listening to Believe, Paranormal and UFO Radio. My name is Cade Moyer and thanks for tuning in. If you've had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au or you can message me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash believe UFO radio. If you enjoy this episode, there are a few things you can do to help the show. Firstly, you can go to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and review, or you can share the show around social media with your friends and family, and that would help us grow. Tonight, I'm joined by Matthew, and Matthew's had some pretty amazing encounters with a UFO and a Yowie. Matthew, welcome to the show. Oh, hi, Kate. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you on, mate. I always get excited when people have multiple encounters, and you've had two of my favorite, a UFO and a Yowie. But let's start off with the UFO encounter, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, with the – so I – normally I kept the two accounts as separate um, because I felt that if I sort of put them together, I'd be discrediting one or the other. But just recently or in now – this UFO Yowie connection that, that seems to be uh, becoming quite right, widespread. It's it's helped me sort of um, I guess combine the two and 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 talk about them as one sort of collective experience. So uh, in regard to, to the UFO uh, encounter, which is the the first one I saw, I probably was um, would have been about ninety four or ninety five. Uh, I think it would have been sort of a ten or ten or eleven at the time. And uh, we had built a property up at uh, in the country, uh, some somewhere near Wood End, um, and the it was sort of on the top of a hill which looked out towards Mount Macedon. And one day, or one afternoon, I was probably a Sunday. Uh, I was in the kitchen, which has a window which looks out towards Mount Macedon, and I noticed in the distance a um, a silver like cigar tube shaped or the, the classic UFO shape um, out there on the horizon. And I was just staring at it for a while and, and my dad was nearby as well. And I said, oh dad, you know, what do you think this is? And we both stood into the kitchen, I stood in the kitchen looking out the window, trying to sort of work it out. Um, you know, was it a weather balloon? Was it sort of a, a, a replica of like a, a Hindenburg blimp? We, we just couldn't quite work out what it was. Uh, it was quite strange because it was it was very large and appeared to be quite far off in, in the distance um i remember quite vividly because i didn't have anything any like windows or any um sort of cabins or propellers coming off it which is uh quite strange in itself so uh, we both went out of the house uh to have a a better look uh, because when you're looking through the window of a kitchen you know you, the, the detail you've got the sort of the windows a bit dirty you've got a fly screen so we went outside to have a better look at it and we were probably staring at it for like two to five minutes, um, just him and myself discussing what it could be. We hadn't actually really said a UFO. We didn't really want to say it because um, it was just so just still and so so physical. It was just so there. It, it was it wasn't sort of moving fast or or it wasn't doing anything strange. It was just like just frozen there in, in the distance. And we um. Yeah, we're both there for a while, and, and my dad decided to go into the house to get my sister and his um, camera so he could take some photos. And he went back inside, and and I was still there staring at it. And then I um, the, what I noticed was behind it and to the left, um, another one sort of, uh, I guess you could say, materialized out of thin air. Um, 
it, it kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, materialized is the only way I can describe it. It just kind of faded in, into um, into the view. It wasn't behind anything, behind the cloud, or, or uh, it didn't sort of, it couldn't have come anywhere. It just, just appeared, like, just over the course of half a second. And um, at that point, I just got this big sort of shiver up my spine, and a, and I realized that what I was seeing here was, uh, was otherworldly or, or just nothing that, you know, modern technology at the time could, could explain it and and i uh, realized that you know i must be looking at not just one ufo here but but two ufos and and i was just staring at them for a while and they, were, they just w w were there they weren't doing anything and then the the second one that that materialized just sort of just took off like in a rocket just out sort of away from me up and to the left so and as it took away as it took off it just got you know smaller really quickly so you could sort of tell it was moving away and then the the first one that appeared took off in the same direction and uh, at that point i was just at that point my dad walks out with my sister uh, out of the house and i said oh you just just missed it it was gone and and uh, it was the timing was impeccable actually because you know had it been out just for a few more seconds you probably could have got a photo of it but um it was uh, unfortunate that he missed it, but I myself had a, a great look at it for, for quite a while. And um, afterwards, I was excited because I thought uh, on Monday when I'd go to school that they'd be on the news and there'd be um, newspaper articles about it. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to tell everyone I had a you know front row seat of this thing and it's going to be really exciting. And I was really shocked that um, Monday came and there was just no... Uh, talk of it anywhere like no one had heard about it and it was really surprising because this thing was so huge and Mount Macedon which is where I saw it hovering over is such a, a prominent landmark and it just didn't really make sense that you know myself and my dad could see something like this and uh, no one else um, talk about it. So when you're referencing the the scale there Matthew how how big do you think the the crafts were? Oh, they had to be quite enormous because if you look at something in, in the distance in the air, you can kind of see, um, I don't know what the term is, but it's kind of like you can see atmosphere in front of something that kind of looks a bit washed out. When like there's like that, 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 that haze to it. Yeah, yeah. And this, so it was probably about the distance of Mount Macedon, which is from where I was, I think it's, well, I think it's 10 kilometers or something, or eight, eight to 10 kilometers. The ship itself was probably about nearly a third of the mountain size. So I actually tried to do some calculations on, on Google Maps and, and using references. Um, and it seemed probably about 300 meters in size, which is uh, absolutely massive. And the one that appeared behind it uh, was a little bit further away and it was probably about the same size. They both looked like the same type of craft. and. Yeah, we're talking 300 meters, and if I can see it at where I was, I can only imagine people on Mount Macedon that they would have seen it, and people sort of at the Wood End Township would have seen it. And um, yeah, it was just so perplexing that my dad and I were the only one who had seen it. In fact, I um, I thought it was a dream. I didn't actually realize that uh, that I'd seen it because we, we didn't really talk about it that much. We just kind of you know forgot about it. And um, uh, when I was at 18 um i just started thinking about it more and more and i asked my dad uh, who, who was um i went to visit at the time uh, in that half embarrassed at a dinner party i, I, I did uh, sorry not dinner party dinner i said do you remember you know maybe seeing something when we were you know when i was young over mount Macedon, and he just cut me off and he said yeah yeah that that silver um ufo yeah and i couldn't believe it because i thought about it on and off over years but hadn't really thought that it was anything other than my imagination and, and here he is telling me that he saw the same thing and and then we went over and, and sort of compared our notes and yeah they were e exactly the same and I, I never led him i never sort of said do you remember seeing a ufo or anything like that he, he just kind of uh he knew exactly what i was talking about and it was such a huge relief because it's something that that was uh, you know causing me a, a, a bit of anguish as to whether it was real or not and I just sort of dismissed it and to realize oh my god this is real and I, and I did see it it was uh it was almost like reliving that the experience and you know we'd talk about it occasionally until 
he unfortunately uh, passed away a, a few years ago. Um, I couldn't get any more details other than what we do, what I've just told you. But um, that was kind of a, a revelation because you know someone else has seen it and um, has seen the same thing as me. And and yeah, like I said, wasn't led or wasn't hinted. It was just out of the blue. I asked him, and yeah, his details matched mine, which was uh, quite a shock. And I could imagine it would have been a, a real weight off your shoulders because how old were you when you, you saw that UFO for the first time? Uh, so I probably would have been about 10 or 11. Oh, wow. So time. that was nearly a decade that that thing's just been replaying in your mind and you weren't totally sure if it was a real event. Yeah, because like I said, I, I did occasionally would Google like, you know, UFO sighting, Macedon, and I, I try to find just anything and... There's just there was just nothing there, so I just kind of thought, well, you know, it must have been a dream, and I just, you know, it wasn't until I was at dinner with him that I just decided, you know, I'm going to put a, a stop to this once and for all. I'm going to find out whether this really happened, and, and I asked him, and yeah, I was really shocked that he actually um, had yeah, seen the same thing I didn't. Yeah, once again, I, I, as much as it was, it was great that 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 had seen it, it also gave me more questions as well like you know how come no one else saw it and i heard about group hallucinations and i, I looked into a lot of possible explanations for it but um the, yeah i mean it was just it was just so real like what i saw up in the sky at that time and 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 just yeah just what he told me as well is so exact to what i've seen too and it just seemed like there wasn't any sort of ambiguity it was just it's almost like what he described was a, was a facsimile of what I've seen, and that, that kind of really reinforced uh, that you know we've both seen something. Absolutely, and when you have a, an encounter with someone and they really uh, corroborate what you saw, it, it gives your experience so much more credence, and you just there's a solidarity to it that you know that this 100% happened. There's I'm not going crazy. I wasn't making this up. This is something that was right there in front of us, and we genuinely saw. We saw a pair of UFOs. Yeah, well, he actually didn't see the second one. Um, so he'd gone back inside to get my sister, and then I saw the second one show up, and then I saw them both take off together. So, um, But what he described me in terms of the, the, the first one, the location, and um, the, the shape of it, the size, that, that was uh, exact, uh, which is you know, brother, which is really what uh, surprised me. And, and what I'd seen afterwards... Um, just yeah unfortunately he didn't get to see that as well but it didn't take away from from what i from the additional one showing up because that was that was the event that made me realize oh my god this is this is something else this isn't uh, this isn't a balloon this isn't a a, a sort of a, a balloon's pretty much the only possible thing that could you know be that size this is something that uh is some other you know self-propelled craft that can travel at a, enormous speeds and, and materialize out of thin air and, then that was the, that and that's was exactly one. it because you can see that that first one there and you can say oh maybe that's a balloon floating there or or something like that but when you see a second one kind of just materialize out of out of nothing it, it kind of makes you go okay this isn't normal this is this is something different yeah and just the fact that they just traveled off at such a great speed um like the, if it was for, for however possibility i mean i, I couldn't even I couldn't even fathom it being a, a balloon just because of its size and and it just moved away so so quickly and 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 just traveled didn't tr you know a lot of sightings that they'll see or a lot of videos you'll see of ufos they'll dart to the left or to the right but this one actually kind of went uh, like up and sort of if i'm looking east kind of yeah up and to the east which is uh so i actually saw it disappear like go off into nothingness basically it just kind of traveled so far away so quickly and i just saw it goes from a large size to a small size and then to nothing in the space of like like a tenth of a second it was uh it was quite incredible and no sound or anything like that either yeah yeah for sure and with it being as big as what you said it is that's that's something that's so incredible because to to see a craft that's uh, 300 meters you you roughly say to to move at that speed that is something that is Nothing on this world can do that. I don't care what anyone says. Nothing that is 300 meters big, let alone 10 meters big, could move that fast. Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's the pretty much the um, yeah the, the thing that I think about the most when I think of that 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 side. Just the 
just the, the speed of it did just disappearing and the direction that, that it went in as well um and then of course you know just the, the way that the other one materialized so there was actually a thin kind of wispy cloud that was there and it kind of materialized just behind the cloud so um it was really strange because it wasn't like it could have come out from behind a mountain or come out from anywhere it just just a just appeared out of thin air and it wasn't just like a, a light switch coming on it kind of just just, just sl- uh, i don't want to say slowly but it just materialized in there and it, it's like nothing i've never seen before i mean you see it on television but to see it like have you know in front of you it's uh yeah it does it's it sends that the hair on on the on the back of my neck up uh you know even today thinking about it because it was uh it was quite an amazing experience and and I mean, we we see things, we see lights moving in the sky, and we can always po- have a possible ex- explanation. But but something like that, I just there's just nothing, and, and I've really tried to to um, come up with any logical, um, to use that term loosely, uh, explanation, and it just yeah, it just evades me every time. So. Yeah, and it's a really fascinating encounter because it's it's not very often that I hear or see or even read about UFOs that seem to materialize or it, the way I'm kind of taking it is that it, it almost had like a, a cloaking device on it because it maybe it was hiding in the clouds and the and the cloaking device got turned off or something like that. You know, I'm I'm shooting in the dark here, but that's kind of that's the impression that I take from it because it's it's so unique. Yeah, the um the the cloaking is the the best way to describe. But I mean, it was so it was like three times the size of the cloud, and it was a very faint wispy cloud. It wasn't anything you could hide anything but behind of as well so uh, I, that that cloud which I, I i you know remember that that's what i sort of that that cloud was kind of like my my um reality uh, the, the 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 thing that i'm familiar with you know we see clouds at the time and then to have that next to it it, it kind of like was, was my measurement as to this is real and then this behind it is, is completely different and yeah the two of them were just just there occupying that that same space and yet yeah, just materialized now nothing and then was there for not very long that the two of them were together and then the, the then they just yeah disappeared off off into the distance just like that so how um, long do you think this whole experience went for oh uh, so probably i'll probably say it's very hard because it was so long ago but i got a very good look at it uh we were looking at it discussing it in the kitchen then we walked outside looked at it for a while then my dad went inside to get the camera uh, and my sister, and then he was in there for, he se- seemed like he was in there for a while. I must have been staring at it for a good, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or something like that. So I, I got to stare at it for a very, very long time and sort of come up with all kinds of uh, possibilities of what it is and just look look for just anything on there that, that might give it away. And like I said, there was no windows, there was no engine, there was no cabin, there was nothing coming off it. It was just, uh, if you Google like, um cigar tube that's exactly the shape it's kind of thin long and rounded at at either edge and like i said the other object was the same too a little bit smaller because i think it was a little bit further away from the first object i saw and um yeah disappearing and and the the thing that racks racks my um brain about it so much is that you know no one else saw it i mean am i seeing it at a specific angle that it's cloaking isn't working or or what is it about me and my dad that we can see it and then the the who knows how many thousands of people in the in the area um can't it's it's one of the things that i had the most trouble coming to grips with and and one of the the biggest reasons why i thought it was a dream and not real was you know, the fact that it was just just us ourselves and the the thing is matthew you probably will never know the answer to that question it's just going to be something that that will sit with you forever because unless there was someone else in that area who listens to this podcast and can can I guess, get in contact with us to let you know, yeah, hey, I definitely saw this. I was in that area. Um, it's just one of those things that may just go unanswered for you, unfortunately. Yeah, oh, that was, if, if anyone had seen it or or anything like that around that time, so it probably would have been 94, 95, and uh, sort of the southern side of Mount Macedon towards, um, there's kind of like a, a, a garden and a cross, which is a landmark of Mount Macedon. It was probably about around that area. Yeah, if anyone has, that'd be great. They can get in touch. But like I said, I, I've been scouring the net for years and, and haven't found uh, anything um, even remotely. I've actually seen um, on YouTube 
a video of a UFO that looks exactly the same. I think it was in oh, it's in Europe somewhere. It might have been in Italy. Um, but that's yeah, that that's amazing because that is exactly like what I saw. But it was a bit small. It was a bit closer to the camera. But that's the closest I've gotten to any any um, sort of I guess current um, evidence or that yeah of, of what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matthew, that's an absolutely fascinating encounter with a UFO. It's um, it's really interesting. Like I said earlier, I really like those those stories that are, you know, seeing a UFO is out of the normal. But then to to go that extra step with that encounter and have it do something that you weren't really expecting, I think that that really gives a a nice touch to, I guess a. a I would say a non-threatening type of UFO encounter. It really makes that rememberable for yourself. Yeah, I never felt any fear from it. It just seemed too far away um, for me to, to be concerned. Uh, but, I, of course, I went through all the motions when I'm watching this thing. I'm like, you know, is this a, is this a blimp? Is this a balloon? Is this some sort of alien invasion? Like, I, I mean, I, I, I went through A to Z uh, of emotions and thoughts just staring up at this thing. And um, yeah, and then it just disappeared, and 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 with it, like any evidence of it ever existing, and and then I just have to, you know, go back to, to normal life. And I guess it's, that's a similar experience that uh, a lot of people who have seen these things have to go through. Just you know, one minute you're seeing something which is life changing, and then all of a sudden, then uh, yeah, you just kind of have to go back to to what you're doing before, and 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 just deal with it. And in my case, I I put it sort of in the back of my head until it became just a distant memory, and then. I mean, I wasn't even sure if it was real or not, which is very similar to the to the the Yowie um, sighting, which I had. Uh, I just yeah, not not much later after that too. Is that something you you want to talk about? Because I am absolutely enthralled with the this Yowie encounter that you got because it it really really fascinates me. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Oh, yeah, I'm happy to talk about it uh, now <laughs> because, um, I mean, listening to your podcast and hearing people coming out and telling their, their side, I, I think it's very brave of them to do it. And I myself have been just thinking about this for so long and, and it's only recently that I've decided to, to um to, to talk to people about it and I've told my family and I, I've tried to get more information I mean my sister remembers some aspects of the day my mum doesn't uh, unfortunately my dad you know, he, he's passed away he I can't really get much more information out of him unfortunately but um you know and it's just things that help me piece together what happened that day and and basically um sort of make it more um more real i I suppose because like i said it'd become uh, just a a distant memory and 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 a a dream and and a thought and you know when you don't think about something for so long sometimes you're not even sure if it actually happened and that's exactly what happened with with the yaoi experience there uh, which i'm happy to, to talk about yeah absolutely are you able to to walk us through that encounter uh yeah absolutely um so uh, it was probably it wasn't long after the UFO sighting. Could have been like, uh, could have been a few weeks. Could have been a, a couple of months. It's definitely within the, the year. Uh, so it would have been a, probably a Saturday or, or, or a Sunday, because um, that's when we go up to this to our property up there at Wood End. And uh, uh, as a kid, when we go up there, I didn't have any sort of computer or PlayStation. So what I used to do for uh, hobbies, I just used to walk around the bush, uh, which I absolutely love doing i'd you know just go exploring and you know as you do in the bush you just keep walking you, you pick a direction and you, and you keep walking and this particular day i decided to go to an area which i don't normally visit i'm not too sure why this this particular area of the bush i it's not like i was scared of it but i just kind of i don't know i, I just generally avoided it so this time i thought you know what? i'm gonna walk through it and um finally see what i've been missing and this day um I was walking down there uh, probably about midday. It was warm weather. And my first thing I noticed was this smell of um, like, uh, it's like a rot, like a dead carcass, essentially. And um, I've come across carcasses before. I don't know, when you're a young kid, you 
you must have like a macabre fascination with you know finding dead stuff i don't know why but so i'm trying to find this thing uh which i thought might have been a sheep that got attacked by a fox which is very very common so the thing that i found really strange was um i'd be walking in this area of bushland and the smell would be so strong like it'd just be on the tip of my nose like i'm standing on top of it and then i'd take a step to the left or to the right and then i'd just be gone and i couldn't quite work out what this is because usually usually you can trace the sense of the smell and then you can walk towards it but it was just sort of here and then it was gone and i'm trying to work out what this could be i remember thinking maybe a fly landed on my nose or something that had fallen that had come off a you know off a sheep and i was just trying to put this together and eventually i uh, probably doing this for, for 10 minutes i couldn't find the source of it and i started to keep walking down this this track it was like an old four-wheel drive track and um i'm walking down there and i just sort of see to the left of me there's like a, a, a burnt out tree stump and then next to the stumps kind of like the fallen it was like a tree had fallen and then the, the stump had sort of you know, burnt out a little bit and i saw kind of like a, a round head there and uh, i do like a double take because you know normally when you're in the bush you'll always see something strange and and you look at it twice and, oh, okay no nah, it's just this so you look at it you know you could always find an explanation but i did this double take and, and then i just saw this this face just staring at me from behind this tree stump uh, which was probably about four foot tall and it was the most strangest thing I'd, I'd ever seen. I, I'd never seen anything like it. it. It wasn't like a monkey. It wasn't like an orangutan. It wasn't a, any creature that I'd seen on TV or, or, or in a book or a magazine. It, it's just proportions were kind of strange. It's, its eyes were huge. Like they were giant, big black eyes. And its, its skin was kind of black or gray. It, its hair was short. And, and it was just staring at me. And I wouldn't have been too far away, probably about, 10 meters or something and i'm just staring at this thing and i'm waiting for my my imagination to like for reality to catch up to my imagination i'm, I'm waiting for it to go oh to see what it really is and i'm just looking at this thing and, and i can see it sort of moving behind the the stump like it's kind of like readjusting itself and then i'm realizing oh my god this is a there's something living there and and it's staring at me and I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, and I didn't know what to do. I just, I just froze. I just froze there and, and just stood at it because, you know, I, I had no other explanation. I, I wasn't quite. What was I say? I was scared, but I was just so shocked, and I was just frozen there. And this thing was just staring at me, and, and I was just staring at it. And this seemed to go on for, for oh, probably, I don't know, probably only a minute, but it just seemed like it was, it was going on forever. And I started sort of getting my thoughts and, and, and realizing I'm, this is some strange animal here. And I think, now I think about it, maybe I, like, I might have taken a step towards it or I don't know, something happened but to break the stalemate and then this creature kind of opened up its, its mouth a little bit and these these two like, uh, like kind of like canines or fangs or whatever, kind of just, they were like on its upper mouth and they just kind of, popped out over its lip as it kind of opened its mouth a little bit these teeth showed up and then i just instantly went from from curiosity to absolute fear um the only thing that could have teeth like that is something that you know would eat meat and could possibly eat me and i'm here on my own about you know 500 meters from the house and i just turned and i just ran for my absolute life uh, as fast as i could back to the house to try to get away from this thing um i'm thinking that you know i'm dead that this thing's going to grab me and and and, and eat me and, and whatever and, and no one's going to know and i'm just running i just remember vividly just running back as fast as i can and thinking i'm not running fast enough you know you know like you're in a in your in your when you're in a dream and you're, you're running from something and you just feel like you, you just can't escape and I'm just thinking that this thing is far more athletic than me and if this thing wants to catch me it can and i'm dead and no one's gonna know what happened to me they're gonna you know i just had all this time to go through these thoughts and i'm running and running and i couldn't look back because i just didn't want i i thought that as soon as i looked back this thing would be an arm away from me and i i sort of ran through this fence sorry, sorry through this gate besides this fence across this paddock and then the second fence i have to kind of 
it's like um, a, a wire fence. So you have to crouch to get through it. And I thought as I was doing it, okay, this time I'm going to look back. And then as I looked back, I, I realized it wasn't there. And um, that was a relief, but I, nonetheless, I still ran as fast as I could back to the house. And as fast as I'd ever run before, I uh, got back to the house. I was absolutely just exhausted. My, my chest was burning. I was so thirsty. Uh, I'd never, like, pushed myself like I did that day. And I just screamed. I said to my dad, 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 you know, there's a monkey. There's a monkey and out there. And normally my parents would be very supportive of anything that, I, that I'd seen or witnessed or anything that happened to me. But I just remember he, he just laughed and said, there's no, there's no monkeys in Australia. And... That was a complete shock to me because I know what I'd seen and he just dismissed it and I was really shocked and, you know, for, for weeks after I, I begged him to come out to, to, to see this thing. I said, Dad, Dad, please come out. It's, it's, it's going to be still there. It's going to be still there. And, you know, about a month later, I finally, after constantly hounding him, he finally um, walked down there with me and my sister and I went up to the walk down up to the tree and, uh, and I thought, uh, this is it, you know, I'm either going to see something that looked like the face or, you know, or I'm going to see this, this creature again or something that's going to help me shine some light on it. And there was just this, the stump and there was just nothing behind it. And I thought, well, there's nothing here that, that could have, um, tricked me and nothing could have cued me to see what I saw. And, and, um, yeah, that was it. You know, never spoke of it again. And, and, um, Afterwards, I was just too scared to go out of the house. I just used to stay in the house every weekend. And my mum and dad would say, you know, go out for a walk, go out for a walk. And I just, uh, I couldn't do it. And it's probably about I don't know, six months later, I finally worked up the courage just to just to travel a small distance. And then the next day, I travel a little bit further, a little bit further. And eventually, I just kind of, just to help me, you know, live a normal life, I just kind of had to forget about it. I couldn't talk to anybody about it because no one would have believed me. So it just kind of went from this this big experience to just fading away into into the, the back of my mind. And you know, for the longest time, I had never really thought about it or remembered it. It was just kind of just there vaguely, but like my UFO thing, I I just thought maybe it was a dream. Um, but yeah, it was you know 15 years or so more after that that i'd sort of gotten into the yowie and the bigfoot phenomenon and then um i saw a picture which was very similar to to what i'd seen it was basically a yowie with big black eyes and it was the big black eyes which 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 triggered the memory and made me realize that hang on, hang on i think i'd actually seen it and and then i would think about it more and then i remembered the 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 smell that happened before, the walking around the bush smelling this, this rotten thing, this rotten smell. And then I looked it up and realized, you know, this is actually a common trait for people to see these things. And then I remember the, the running back to the house, running for my life, which, um, you know, was very, very, very scary. And then I remember later on just trying to um, – readjust and get life back to normal and then when i put the whole thing together it just painted this 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 detailed picture of what happened that day and that that helped me fill in the blanks and realize you know i have actually seen something matthew that's an incredible encounter that is uh it's it sounded like this thing was was stalking you because the first thing that kind of comes to my mind is that you're trying to to pinpoint where this smell is coming from and every time where you you think it is it moves so to me, that makes it sound like this this Yowie was moving around you, t- trying to uh, either evade you or get in front of you to put you maybe in that in that vulnerable position that you were that you were potentially in. Yeah, I think it was trying to avoid me, um, just because the the way I saw it behind the, the tree, it, it wasn't sort of threatening. It was kind of like it was kind of like hiding behind it, which helped me sort of. Uh, alleviate my initial fears which is probably why um i think i may have tried to approach it a little bit or or just done something to to really spook it out um and also the size of it i didn't mention it before but it wasn't like the the traditional it wasn't a massive yaoi um this thing was young i i I, I don't know i could describe it as 
it may have been like they, they call it Jinjari, the, the smaller Yowie, uh, which is sort of, I've found is, is more sort of common in northern parts of Australia. Um, but I think it may have been sort of a juvenile, um, just because I just I just felt like this thing was young. I don't know how to describe it, but it just it didn't seem old and weary. It, it seemed just kind of it seemed just kind of young. Yeah, just young is the only way I can describe it. I mean, you know, it, its skin was sort of smooth. Um, it had the, the the brow ridges. The eyes were were kind of set. Um, its mouth was kind of like a round, like a mouth of like a, an orangutan. You know, you, it's like the round part where the mouth is, um, and extremely wide. Um, which is what was I remember being so so eerily about it um, was this proportions like its eyes were huge and were kind of wider apart than than what you'd normally see in a monkey and its mouth was very very wide and it was more wider than, than any other creature it just seemed out of out of proportion for any other other creature that that I'd seen uh, sort of in a book or, or on television so that, that's why I was really um, sort of shocked about it and then of course the the teeth when i saw those dog i remember that i remember that so so vividly those white things just popping out from from behind its its lips when it just opened its mouth a little bit it never made a noise never lunged at me i, I think it was just trying to, to tell me to stay away and, and not to get close um but that was that was more than enough uh, I, that i needed to, to turn and run and i'm just glad this thing didn't try to to eat me because i wouldn't have had a chance i mean <laughs> this this whatever this thing was it, it could definitely have uh, have hurt me you know greatly i think you saw a, a jundity as well because what you what you've described fits more within that that type of creature more so than than the yaoi because the thing that really stands out for me is those those large black wide set eyes because a lot of the Yowie reports that I that I hear, they they say the the eyes are very human like or they're they're very monkey like, mm. but they're not not far set apart or they're not overly large. They're they're kind of in proportion to to what the creature is. But the reports that I hear about Junjadis are that the the eyes are set further apart and they're they're very very large and they're like jet black. Yes, yes. Th this thing was black. I never saw any any pupils or I never. I never saw into its eyes I, as you would you know when you look into a normal and if like a person or, or a cat or a dog you can look into its eyes this thing i couldn't see it was almost like it was wearing a, like a like a mask you know but it's it's yeah it's just eyes were just black and like they're just soulless they had nothing there was nothing there there was no sort of character and they were just so wide and i remember the wrinkles above it and it's in, into the side of it of it, its sort of face um it was just it never blinked or or, or anything like that it just it just stared at me and, and just you know those eyes are the most vivid uh part of the experience uh more so than the of well, obviously apart from the teeth basically the eyes and the teeth were the were the most vivid parts and um yeah those are the things that i would remember I, i'd love to, to have a, the chance of doing some sort of hypnosis or, or regression therapy just to remember any any more details about it just to see if there's anything there that i that I might have missed because um, it's something that, strangely enough, I'd, I'd love to see again. I'm probably not in the same circumstances, like sort of walking on my own in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I've always been sort of fascinated and, and drawn into the, the to the subject of the um, of the Yowie slash Bigfoot, uh, even before I realised that I'd actually seen this thing. So you were a believer before you saw this. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't. I was a very, uh, I was a skeptical for the longest time, which helped me, I guess, repress this memory. And then I, I remember, probably two thousand and nine or something, you know, ten. I was uh, on the internet, um, and I came across this video of the uh, Patterson Gimlin footage, and it was like a, an analysis, of a hasty analysis, and, and I kind of just thought, oh, this thing again, the bullshit, this big. Bigfoot bullshit, you know, there's no way this is true. And I watched it for five minutes and they talked about things that I never thought about, like the gait of it, um, the, the size in comparison of what was going on around it and uh, just its physical characteristics and how it's impossible for a person in a, in a suit to to mimic that kind of walk and, and those that, that kind of um, joint movement and things like that. And then that, that kind of got me into it. Um, and then I sort of read a bit about more and then I looked into the, to the Yowies and actually 
join the um the yaoi research just you know just the stalk on the site and to read some people's accounts and stuff and yeah th that all happened that all happened quite a few years before i remembered my experience and like i said what what just triggered that was you know one night going down the rabbit hole just looking up um pictures of yaois and then uh this one came across where someone had, had drawn a a picture of it and it just had these, these giant black eyes and i looked into these black eyes at the picture and, and it just it just clicked i just realized hang on did i really i think i might have seen something like this and and um no no that's you know probably just watching too much videos and stuff and, and then i just think of it over and over again and, and i remember a little more a little more, more detail like the the walking around and, and the smelling it which is something i'd remembered previously but didn't connect it to what i'd seen and then i remember the hiding out in the house and not wanting to go out you know th these are memories that i remembered outside of the experience but didn't realize they were all combined as part of one event it, it was quite interesting it's like someone had gone to my brain with an eraser and just just erased the, the most important part and just left everything else and uh yeah when i put the whole experience together from the, the smelling to the scene to the running to the trying to get my parents to, to, to go see this thing and then eventually to me a uh, walking in, into the bush again you know first a few meters then a few more meters and then eventually um back to where i am now where i can just go into the bush normally and not worry about those things so it hasn't scared you out of the of the bush anymore no, no, definitely not. Um, maybe it should have, but the, you know, I've been reading about the, the Yowie and, and you know the, the, yeah, the Sasquatch and, and just things that go on in the bush for so many years. I, I, um, it, I don't know. If, I'm, I'm sure many people can relate. It just gives you this this desire to to just want to go out and want to experience it for yourself. And and, and I just want to see. I just want to see it in in person one more time, just just up close, you know, undeniable, and and just see it and just just experience it because I've had close calls uh, out in the bush. I've I've had camper. I usually go camping sort of around um, the east side in the mountainous areas of Victoria, where there had initially been a lot of sightings, and I would you know hear things and you, and you have your little experiences, but you know unless you actually see one up close you know head to toe or, or, or undeniably see it and its features you know you can always say oh maybe i saw this or maybe i saw something else but um yeah nothing would beat uh, to, to to be able to see it uh, up close and, and in the flesh again like i did as a kid <laughs> even though i'd probably do the same thing i'd probably run for my life but it doesn't change the, the desire to, to want to see something like that again definitely and i think that's a that's a really good outcome from having an experience like this because the the experience that you had it it's quite terrifying and you you were quite young when it happened so that could that could really leave a lot of emotional scars around you know going into the bush having having a lot of anxiety about something like that and the the fact that you've really come out of it at i guess at the end of it which is you know i guess your story now is that you're happy to go back into the bush and you you almost have this this drive to to have an encounter like that again i think that's i think that's really good yeah i mean living up in, in the country for a, a good part of my well not permanently but sort of i'd spend school holidays and weekends up there it was kind of like i had to i had to forget about it i had to make i had to make peace with it just in order to to enjoy living up there i mean i couldn't lock myself in the house for, for my entire adolescent years up there i just you know, it, the bush is beautiful when, you, when you're out there, you're walking and you can, you know, the wind through the trees and you can see the animals. And it's something that uh, is a big part of my childhood. And, and um, I, could, I wouldn't let anything uh, yeah, jeopardize that, even seeing what, I, what I'd seen. So before we wrap up tonight there, Matthew, what do you think the, the Yowie is? What do you think the Junjadi is? Uh, well, initially it was, I thought, oh, this thing's got to be flesh flesh and blood. This has got to be some kind of, you know, unknown primate that, that's been in the bush. But uh, I've read so many accounts and seen so many documentaries and it just, there just has to be something else there. I mean, there's been sightings in islands and in, in, in top of mountains and there's just places where there's just, they, I can't see them surviving there or, or living there unseen and, then there's uh, cases of you know footprints that just stop in the middle of nowhere and singular footprints and 
and people seeing them mist materialize and just really strange stuff that I initially would just dismiss. And it just keeps coming up and up again from legitimate sightings. And I, I believe, which is another reason why I'm finally confident with, with coming out with both, both my accounts it was that there is some sort of connection between the, the two. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is, but I just feel that there is something more, more to it. Uh, there's some sort of interdimensional explanation. Um, because that's the only way I can explain so many what's what just seem like legitimate encounters um, that there must be something else and it took me a while to to just embrace that because you know once you go down that rabbit hole you could come up with any number of theories and things that are unproven and untested and but there there is something there I, I do believe that it is some sort of interdimensional creature and that um, I also think that it may be people who have seen them tend to see them again as well i just think that there's also some personal connection between people who see this thing and um you know i've had accounts since then uh, of where i've seen and heard strange things nothing up like what i'd initially seen but they're, they're just things that make me realize that, that maybe i'm just on the edge of, of perceiving this thing and, and, and many other people are in a similar place and uh yeah that's that's my personal belief um you can go into the whole quantum theory um quantum bigfoot theory and stuff like that but but just personally that that's my uh, that's my thoughts on the matter and that also helps me with my personal sort of research there because i don't go out with all this equipment and to, to find this thing again i just go out you know by myself or with my, with my friends and then we just we don't take uh, any sort of cameras or, or anything like that or trail cams because they just seem to know that that stuff's around and they just seem to keep away from it. The, the, the less I try to capture this thing, the more likely I am to, to, to witness it again. And I think that's the same for other people as well. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. I think that's the, the best way to go about it because uh, not, to, not to kind of, I guess, poo-poo anyone's ideas when they go out to try to find these Yowies because, I mean, no one no one really knows what they are and I think that's half the half the fun of, you know, the, the Yowie is that no one knows what they are. But you, you're pretty much spot on with the, the, the fact that they do seem to know when someone's put up a trail cam or, or something like that because they just never show up on them or they break or they malfunction or something happens. It's... Uh, you hear it a hundred times. Yeah, the, the biggest clincher for me was um, so around the time that dash cams became the norm, I was rubbing my hands together because so many people had seen these things out on the road, and I thought now that dash cams are a thing, these these sightings are just going to start flooding in, and you know, well, dash cams have been you know common in people's vehicles for what, eight to ten years now, and I just you, there's been no proper footage this, apart from that that police. Um, uh, cop car footage from the states from a few years back. Um, there's been a, you know a couple other stills, but there's never been like uh, like a, anything like eyewitness accounts that have been captured on, on a on a, on a dash cam. And I just feel that they're just aware of um, of almost like their impression on on the um, universe. I don't know how to describe it, but they just seem to know how to avoid being recorded and and. Um, yeah, that's the way I can describe it. And you know what? You you may just be right there, Matthew. And I think that's the the great thing about the Yowie is that everyone can have their their own theory, their own hypothesis about it. Because at the end of the day, we don't know yet, and mm. anyone's guess could be right. Yeah, I don't think we will find them for what they are for a while. Um, they're just too elusive. They're just not, you know. That, yeah, it's just too hard to, to, to get even just the proper evidence aside from scat, maybe some hair samples and DNA. But uh, people talk about finding bodies and stuff, and it, it's just been, been too hard. I mean, I, I could talk for hours about the accounts I've read of people finding bodies and what ends up happening to them. But at the end of the day, nothing, it doesn't progress. So um, it does leave a lot of room for people to, to, to come up with their own ideas and to to, to, to think about it. And, and, and that study in itself is, is pretty fascinating. And to have people thinking outside of the the, the normal paradigm is uh yeah it's it's, it's good it's it's healthy for uh for for humanity. <laughs> I think so too. Right? I think so too. Well, Matt, it's been great having you on the show, mate. Your encounters are being 
they're, they're incredible. There's there's no other words that I can really say. The the UFO encounter that you had uh, and you shared it with your dad and um, I think that was absolutely fascinating. And this Yowie slash John Jadee encounter is, is absolutely amazing because a lot of people would only dream to come face to face with one of these creatures and uh, you, my friend, are one of those lucky people. Yeah, I mean, it was so long ago, and it's just such a, it's just, it's just a memory now, and I, I'm just not satisfied. I want, I want to see things like that, that again, and uh, I'm gonna be out there looking like a, a lot of people, and yeah, I, I um, I guess I'm the, one of the lucky ones in that regard. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty more out there. There's plenty more other people that have seen a similar thing, and they just. They just haven't had that that time for them to come out and talk about it, and and you know if if they're out there and, and they they want to do it, they they should feel comfortable about it. And, and I myself, I'm not trying to convince anyone. I mean, they they if I heard it, it, it would sound preposterous. But I just it's something that's just sat with me for so long, and and I just think it's it's, it's time that I that I get it off my chest. And I, like I said, these kind of things, you, you kind of have to see it to believe it. So uh, I'm not trying to. You know, convince anyone, and and, and you know, there's people out there that are skeptical. I, I I endorse that. I say it's good on you. You should be skeptical, but uh, at the same time, just keep looking, and <laughs> yeah, and you'll eventually see something. I promise. And that's going to do it for tonight. And remember, if you have had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au. Or you can message me on Facebook and that's facebook.com forward slash Believe UFO Radio. Until next time, stay safe and you've been listening to Believe Australian Paranormal and UFO Radio.